Hey everyone, I'm Eric. This is my wife, Julie, and we are The Blended Life. Hey you guys, today we are giving our tips, tricks, wisdom, and advice um, to blended families. Things that we wish we would have known, things that we've learned. It's gonna be a good one. Enjoy. Okay, so where are we going to even start on this one? Well, it's, we're going to just tell, we've been doing this for a handful of years now. We handful. were just talking about that, right? Yeah, Blended Life has been going for five years. Yep. The and podcast has been going, in June it'll be going for four. Yeah. And so I, f I feel like, you know, we've been doing this for a handful of years. And as I think about the work I do as a Blended family life coach and and just what we have done I thought it'd be fun to just do a compilation of uh, like a greatest hits of advice like if if I had to sit down and make a, a deck around you know what's it what are advices advices that's not a word <laughs> it is today <laughs> it's it is your today, word whatever yes. but like what's advice that I would give what are things that I've learned like the gold nuggets of blended family like things that we've learned or wish we would have known or you know what are some nuggets that we can share with our audience um as we just move as on in life on. you know and there's going to be so much more I'm like this is only a handful of years in although I will say for me it's been a 40-year journey <laughs> right yeah it ha I mean you've been in a blended family since you were one years old yep so I think also this this forty year journey that it, that kind of feeds this as too right. Um, so I thought we just we talk about those things and and hopefully you know those listening will find it useful to hear oh, our nuggets. A, I I already got a sneak peek into what we're going to be talking about today <laughs> since you are the mastermind of our topics and um, there's some there's some really good tips and tricks. There are. Do you want ideas. me just to go? Yeah, just get, let's do this. Just do this. Okay, yeah. so the first thing that I would say to somebody who is blending their family mm -hmm. is about fun. Oh. And this is something that is really underutilized and underappreciated and underdiscovered is fun. Um, we're all wrapped up in love and dreams and desires and we're all wrapped up in the shoulds and what we want well and everyone thinks that their blended family needs to look a certain way and needs to fit in a certain way or you're just idealistic like <laughs> that could just be society huh yeah you know so fun why 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 fun and i think fun is a bridge to connection i tell it's a lifeblood yeah I, I tell people this you know when you're having fun you're bonding and what happens in fun? Fun, there's no fear usually. Yeah. Like kids. Like if you right. think about bringing kids and going to have fun together, they're safe. They're um, making memories. And they're willing to engage in fun. Yeah. And even as a married couple, you know, um, one of the things that you and I have discovered is in marriage, <laughs> We change. <laughs> I'll say, why Why are you giggling? Because there's different seasons in, in our relationship. You and I were, you, we were having this discussion. A couple days a, ago. While, yeah. Oh. And it's just like the season we're in now looks different than the season we were in when we were friends yeah. before things got romantic. And then we started dating. And then we moved in. And then we got engaged. And then we got married. And then things shifted again. The first year of marriage was really, really hard. Mm -hmm. Probably our most difficult year. Right. And so even between the adults and the blended family to still have fun with each other. Right. That you might not always like each other. <laughs> you might not always agree with one another. You guys are going to grow differently as you just evolve into more mature humans. You know, you. Well, some of us mature. Some of us don't. I mean, I'm still the 12 year old you fell in love with. Yeah. You're regressing. I had, yes. You were 13. I, You're I going had, backwards. Guess what now. I had for lunch today? Chicken nuggets. And? Macaroni and cheese. And? 
No, I didn't have the mac and cheese. Buddy had the mac and cheese. Monster. Monster and some Chick-fil-A sauce. (laughs) Yes. But my point (laughs) is, is that, you know, when you're newly blending or whether you're trying to keep your marriage afloat um, or you're feeling disconnected with anyone in your family, if you're desiring connection with, you know, as a family in your marriage, in your relationship, or maybe with one of the kids, maybe your own child you feel disconnected with. Um, if you can figure out a way to go have fun, I think fun needs to be more of a priority in blended family life than people. I don't even know if people think about that. Yeah. I mean, you're building, well, you're building memories and you're building, um, you're, that's where you really, I feel, get to know one another. I mean, there's other outlets also, but that's where usually when, when people feel, um, safe and they're having a good time usually is the place that they feel less vulnerable. Yeah. So, you know, kids especially, that's a great place of having fun. And again, we've talked about this where you don't have to go spend tons of money to have fun. You Kids can have fun in any way. You, you know were saying I mean? build a fort. You build a fort and have a sleepover in the living room with your kids. I mean, you know. Or uh, as but, adults, how no, fun would No, but that's the that best be? way for, yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. Kids and adults, everyone go do it. Yeah. You know, but that's the best way for, um, kids to feel less vulnerable and bond with their step parent, yeah. you know, because they're just having a fun time and you know, it's not like, Hey kids, this is a bonding exercise. Here we go. You know, you don't have to play it like that. Like, let's just have some fun. Yeah. Um, okay. So I think we, we, we covered that one real well. We whacked that one right on the head. We did. It's yeah. a really important one though. So appropriate. We started with that. The second one is, um, something I work with clients. I work with clients on all this stuff. So this is like if I'm having a big session with yeah. everyone here. Um, the second nugget, I would say, um, and something you would hear in AA meeting. I've really. Never, I've never been in one. You know what's funny? What's that? Is I could probably be in AA and I've never tasted alcohol. You should. You're obsessive. I, I'm, uh, I'd like you have it, an addictive personality. Because here's the thing is if I drank <laughs> alcohol... I would for sure be an alcoholic. For right? sure. Would I you, agree. Like, you agree? You're so not going to do anything halfway. No. <laughs> like, for sure. <laughs> I'm and going like, streaking. And not only yeah. would you be an alcoholic, but you would have to have, like, top shelf everything. Oh, for sure. So for not sure. only would it be, like, an alcoholic problem, it'd be a money problem, it'd be too. A financial <laughs> issue It'd be after. a financial <laughs> burden because you're not willing to have, like, no, I don't have, know. I'd have a Well drinks. So you're like, I want top shelf everything. Stuff. It would yeah. just be stupid yeah. i'd have um, a, i'd have a swimming pool full of cold schlager wow well, i don't it's even just know if an i've alcohol ever had that. with gold in it apparently the fact that you know this i know lots of things that's true i know things i'm like how did you learn that <laughs> all my friends drank doesn't mean i was like uh, some like perfect schoolboy. like all my friends <laughs> drank not. and smoked and did drugs and like i had a lot of people around me that were bad influences that i learned from you know it's just because your kids have kids that are naughty around them doesn't mean that you should necessarily take them away from those kids. Mm. You should have talks with your kids. Look at you biting your lips. I think that you should have talks with your kids to have use good discretion, learn from those kids. Try to teach them, you know, have, the, have them teach those kids like, you know, hey, you know, set, set a better example for them. But I don't think that sheltering a kid and keeping them away from the bad world that we live in is necessarily the way. And I'm not, that's just my parenting style. But I'm like, teach your kids to be different and learn from everyone else. No, I, I agree that you don't need to put your kids in a bubble. It doesn't help them. Yeah. And I would say that you are the sum of your five closest that people. Is def- that's definitely true. I'm so, not saying make those kids your best friends. Right. So yeah. I, I, it's also teaching discernment that if your children are going to be around people making bad decisions children, and that yeah. their own, that's their only friend group or their only experience, well, th- then you step in. Then it's a time to, yeah, but that's that's the lesson in this is, is it's not for the kids, it's for the parents to parent. Yes. So the kids become You be a light better. into that world. That's it. But that is not your world. That's it. That's an extra little. That's, that's not even a nugget we were going for. That's my for. nugget for you. Write that down. I, I, my quote about that, <laughs> be a light into the world. I am going oh, to. Man, look at mm-hmm, her go. Be a light into their world. 
and then it's a little it'll be a little nugget giving off little rays of sunshine <laughs> one of my nuggets that i ate for lunch oh my gosh <laughs> do you have a nugget you want to share or you want me to continue <laughs> no, on i ate them all oh gosh <laughs> the um, whole tray okay I think that's a really, really good one. That's a really great parenting tip. Um, we don't want to shelter our kids, but we want to be aware of like their world. No, we need to parent our children. We need to be able to let them see. And same thing with politics. You know, you believe one way in politics um, and the world around you, you know, might believe the same way. But there's people that believe the other. teach your kids and talk to your kids before the world talks to your kids. If you believe one thing, you know, or um, religion um, you know, uh, just everything. Parents, we got to be parents. We got to show up. We got to be there for our kids because if we're not there for our kids, someone else is going to be. That was beautiful. I quoted you. Thank you. You might show up in a newsletter. <laughs> That's what I'm paid for. If you guys want to be in, in our like inner circle, there's like a new inner circle. Is there? Can I be in it? You are in it. I am? Yeah. I never got the invitation. Sorry. You did. You just get the email. I signed you up. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm in that circle. You're in that circle. Good job. I like so, that So, yeah. So, if you want an, an, another little um, avenue to connect and to get insight and encouragement and tips and tricks, um, go to my website. It's um, www.becomingherd.com. And you can sign up, subscribe, and you're going to get a weekly newsletter, a weekly... I'm calling it a newsletter. I don't even know what to call it. A weekly it is. email. It's, yeah. What is it? I'm s- I'm new to the game. It, I don't know. No, it's it's yeah. It, it's, it's a weekly a, something. It's an email. It's an email that has tips, ideas, has photos. It has it has all the things. You were the star of. I know. Not that's why. It was last week's email. Weeks ago, yeah. Yeah. This um, week's email is a client of mine. Have you opened it yet? Uh no, because Go see I. It. It's good. I woke up and went straight to a meeting and then drove home from a meeting. Ate your chicken nuggets and came Made here. my nuggets, made my nugs while I was answering emails and phone calls mm. um, with clients and then rushed straight over here. Oh, so nice. we could. So we could do this. Do this. So anyway, if you want to sign up and get some more information and just get a weekly dose of um, me and Eric too, um, sign up, subscribe. You can go to becomingherd.com. You'll Love see at you the bottom. That. Everyone does the www and like. I did that earlier, and I then know, I just said becomingherd.com. One of our other podcasts that we that we produce does that too, and I yeah. have to be like, hey, you don't have to put the w's in. <laughs> no one cares anymore. Um, <laughs> so becomingherd.com. Go subscribe to my newsletter you can just um at the bottom of the first page i think you put in your information right. um and you can also book a free breakthrough session through the website i'm really yeah. proud of this website i'm it's proud of you a labor I'm, of love yeah but i'm proud of you because what you have grown this to be from this podcast to continue to not only just bless people with a podcast that they can listen for free but to be able to go further and push themselves and better themselves and better their families and better everyone around them. I mean, it's nothing but good that comes out of what you do. So I'm very proud of you. Thanks. I would love to give a shout out to, to Mandy Bayman. Um, she actually built the website for me. Um, and you know, Mandy, if you're listening to this at any time, my undying gratitude to you. Um, she has a company called spot your light. You can go, look her up. She's amazing. And if you need website services, you know, go look at mine and then go on over to spot your light and uh, you can connect with her and anyway. She's, and she's good with it too. You know, I've she been doing amazing. this type of stuff for a long time and know all the ins and outs. And I was just, <laughs> I was too busy to help you. Sorry, love. Yeah. So you, yeah. So it's you better got not working. to work with spouses. Well, sometimes. and that's kind of also, part of it, it too. Yeah. But, I'd but be talking with her, and the meetings with her, she's yeah. spot on. She knows what she's doing. There's no miss of words. And she cares about it too. Well, yeah, she it, yeah, and she doesn't. Uh, she's she's easy to work with. It's very easy. It's to great. Work with, so. I'm still waiting for my sunset photo. That's my it's fault. It's a good thing I went and bought one <laughs> stock images. You bought a stock. Of you know course, many, I had to. You know how many tens of thousands? Miss Lazy Pants over here won't go through Stop. all my folders and find them. So, um, okay, next nugget. This is the AA. Nugget that <laughs> have you been through AA? No. <laughs> how, how, how are we talking about AA? We I just I, this is it. where I hear it from the most. But um, 
you know, accepting what you can't control. How about controlling the controllables? That's controlling like the, the controllables, accepting yeah. what you can't control. Yeah, I think that acceptance, and this is something I've talked to clients about a lot, you know, acceptance and peace go hand in hand. And you don't have to agree, to, you know, and I think when we talk about acceptance, there's some level of like, well, if I accept it, then I agree with it. I condone it. And I'm like, mm, not the definition of acceptance, right? You can accept things that you don't like and you don't agree with. I mean, this is our co-parenting journey, right? This is our marital journey. This is our parenting in our own home journey. I can't tell you how many things we have disagreed on, Eric and I, in parenting. Or our exes and us have disagreed on it's daily. co-parenting. It's daily. So I mean, if it's not us, it's them. <laughs> if it's not you, it's me. Yes. So how do you, I mean, you could choose to live upset about everything all the time. That is a choice. Um, or you can really just understand, like, do I have control to change somebody else? No. Do I have control to change my... Like the power I'm allotted. Am I allowed to discipline? Yes or no, you know? And, and you can choose to be upset about it or you can choose to accept it, especially if you want to stay. If, if you want to stay in this blended family, you want to stay married, you want to stay put, then acceptance is kind of part of that journey. Acceptance is its own journey, but I think that's where peace exists. You know, we talk a lot about peace too. Everybody wants peace. Acceptance is peace. When you've accepted it, you're not, you're laying it down as fact instead of always trying to manipulate or, or alter it. Do you know what I mean? I know what you mean. So that's a really, really useful piece of information I would have, I wish I would have had early on, but something that I feel like we're both really good in just utilizing in our blended family. Do you agree? Yeah, 100%. 100%. It's hard to, it's, it's hard, I, um... It's hard to accept that which you disagree with, though. I, I get that's a hard ask. Yeah, especially if you can't see the other side of it. Mm. You know, if you're like, I don't know. And co-parenting is that way because you're not yeah. living under the roof. You're not having conversations to you try know, to, like, yeah, understand. Yeah, and how often do you go, like, how did I once see eye to eye with this person and married or not married but have children with this person? And then sometimes it feels like I don't agree with anything about this person now and then you have to so what i do in that situation i kind of humble myself and be like well you know what i was different back then she was different back then we were you know we were different naive kids like i know where i have grown and um i have seen where she has grown and it's taken us to different places and um with that comes some acceptance where um i think it helps me agree or or at least see other sides of things sometimes you know where um my ex and i don't always disagree a lot of times we we agree very much so i feel like you agree more than you've ever disagreed hmm. maybe i feel like this is the first time like the season of teenagerhood might be the first time it's been a little bit different you yeah. know you guys are starting to like see things a little differently but i think yeah. like overall you guys have been very agreeable but both of us have grown both yeah. of us have grown over the years, but we've grown differently. We've yeah. grown in different areas, um, which is fine. I mean, that's that's people. You and I have grown differently. You and I yeah. have grown in different we areas. We need to start having fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't even know how to spell fun. Th let what alone is have that? N-U-F? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Enough, yes. <laughs> but I, I think acceptance, too, is you not only is it key to peace, but what is peace? It calms you down. And I think sometimes you, to deal with some really hard things that you're going to have to deal with in blended family life, being able to come at it from a calm place is a lot better for everyone, including your own stress and your own sanity. So acceptance is just as much for you as it is any, anyone else. Kind of like forgiveness is, is more for you than the other person. Right. Um, so I, I think if you're wanting a calmer experience, you really need to look at what what are things that I'm going to need to accept that I can't change? And I think people don't like that. And I don't think that's a thing we consider before we walk down the aisle, which is a shame because I do think there are we pair up with, with people and with circumstances that we simply do not want to accept. We cannot accept it. And then we're setting ourselves up for a lifetime of, like, upset. 
So, you know, you're really, if you're not married yet and you're listening to this podcast, I mean, what are the things that you're having a hard time accepting and ask yourself if this never shifts, if this never changes, am I going to be okay? That's a really great question I would say to anybody getting, you know, well, getting married in a blended family situation or not. That's well, that's, you know, all people. Yeah. Well, that's part of it. But two, also, I think we all need to keep in mind, whether married or not married yet, that sometimes things do shift and sometimes sometimes things do change. And if this person that I'm married to or getting married to shifts and changes, you know, within the boundaries, like we always have boundaries for ourselves. But if this person changes a bit, am I still going to love them? Am I going to be able to love them if, um, you know, say we're in a in a lifestyle of partying, drinking, going out, you having know, fun, having fun. I don't even know what that means. See, again, I've never had it. So, um, but if that were to change and say this person, um, what was the song we were just listening to by the newsboys? Jesus freak. <laughs> what if this person just becomes a Jesus, a Jesus freak, a Jesus freak and was like, I'm going to change my life and I'm changing it for the better. I'm not saying someone starts going downhill necessarily. I'm saying someone starts changing their lifestyle and wants to live more maturely. Am I going to love and support this person for that? Or am I only in this for the fun? Mm. Interesting. Yeah. I I've, like that perspective. I've, That's I've, smart. I've seen this in relationships. I've seen mm. this in relationships all through the years where people just shift and they change. And it's like they're not coming along for the ride or I'm not going along for that ride. Yeah. And that's normal because we are not the same. Like, I hope when I'm 80, I've advanced from Me 41. Too. You know, you're excited you're for closer the 80 Okay, stop. Um, next nugget. Are you ready? Or do you want to throw a nug? I had so many nugs today. I should have brought them and okay. ate them while we were here. Do you want to share a nug? Not, not, yet. not yet. You, you okay. are on a roll. Um, so this is something, again, gosh, it's just like a, a client session. I keep saying that, but I'm like, these are things if I think. If you guys want to be a client and want some more of this beautiful insight yep. and really want to change your lives. Go be to becomingherd.com. Becomingherd.com. And you can contact, you can email me from yeah. there. You can do everything Or email there. her or just skip the line and go to becomingherdnow at gmail.com. Just email her. Or, or book a breakthrough session. That's really skipping That's, the line. Yeah. And, and like this and thumbs this up. See? Mm -hmm. um, okay. <laughs> you guys are watching on YouTube. Moving Subscribe. on. <laughs> we talk a lot about power. And I think one of the most empowering things we can do is, is define our own roles in our blended family. And this blows people's minds because we talk about power a lot and I hear a lot, well, how can I define my role when my role is subject to the power I'm given by the bio parents, like discipline, like making rules. Mm -hmm. um, and so my role is dependent on what others allow me to do. Right. Well, you know what the other thing is funny kind of about roles, or at least I felt, I feel like it in our family is roles shift. It's not always, even though I feel like I have a role sometimes it changes and the role is a lot like the ocean. It, it has tides. It rolls in and it rolls out and it just. <laughs> and it rolls over your jeans when you sit down. Yeah, just it just, it, that's, it feels like it sometimes it, you know, it's like, it's kind of changes sometimes. Yeah. But that's the beauty of it is it's like, you're not always stuck in this disciplinary role or, you know, the nurturing role, you know, in a, in a blended family and having stepkids, you get to kind of come and go a little bit. Yeah. Well, and I think a lot of people are so anxious and have stress around, I don't know what I'm supposed to do in my blended family. I'm a step parent and I don't know what that looks like. Or I'm a bio parent and that shifted now that a, a, another person has come into our home and I don't know what that looks like. And so what I empower my clients to do, and I'm going to also empower you guys and challenge you guys that you define the role you want. And it's less about the things you're doing, and it's mostly about who you're being. So when you're thinking about your role in your blended family, try not to focus so much on the tasks and what you're actually doing. I want you to more think about who is it that I want to show up as. As a stepmom, 
what are the qualities that I want to show up at, with in my family? Do I want to be respectful? Do I want to be encouraging? Do I want to be inspiring and motivating? Do I want to make sure that my life is living in alignment with my values so that the kids see that? Do I want to be agreeable? Do I want to challenge the status quo? Do I want to be a little rebellious? Do I, do I want to instill wisdom? Like if you think about who you are and what role you want to play, the qualities that you want to show up with, then the to-do list doesn't matter as much because you've now given yourself direction in who you want to show up as right. and nobody can do that for you. Right. You don't need to look for direction from anyone. You really just need to look inward. And I think that calms people down a lot and gives them confidence. You know, I I knew this was something I did not struggle with because I was really clear on the circumstances I was marrying into. Meaning, you know, I, I knew about your ex. I knew about your relationship. I knew about the challenges or lack of, you know, I knew what I was marrying into Mm -hmm. And I also was a step kid with step parents. Right. Which I which so, has really given you a heart not only for um, my kids or your step kids, but it's given you a heart for, believe it or not, my ex. And you have absolutely and you have actually and absolutely been an advocate for her and the relationship for her and Thank you for saying that. and our kids. Mm-hmm that she has no idea goes on behind the scenes and probably doesn't go on behind the scenes at any other household. And that is the reason I'm even bringing this up is not to toot your horn. Toot toot. toot. Yeah. However. I'll take it because I'm proud of that. No, I did I, not. Ha- that's a, right. I'm proud of that. But that is something. Sorry. The reason I'm bringing that up is because I want other. I want our listeners. I want you at home to hear this because the way Julie does this not only helps the relationship between her and the kids, but it helps the relationship between my kids and their parent and my kids and me. And it helps everyone out. Do you feel like it helps your relationship with your co-parent? For sure. That's why I'm I'm saying it helps everyone out. But what it does is it allows the kids to be kids and love the other parent. Yes. Even though I might not love the other parent or you might not love the other parent, It doesn't matter about us. We don't matter in that situation. It's all about the kids being able and being free to love the other parent. And I feel a lot of times in blended families, that gets lost. That is something that is robbed or stripped of the kids or the kids are shamed out of loving the other parent. And if the kids don't want to love the other parent, that should be on the kids, not the adults telling them. Yeah. Brainwashing them into not loving the other parent. Let, Let them choose that on their own. Yeah. But we should always encourage them to love and respect the other parent because it starts there. If kids can't love and respect their own parents, who the hell are they going to love and respect? Yeah. Well, how does that look? How does that translate (laughs) in their own marriages or friendships? Exactly. Years down the road. Agreed. You know, and I really feel like that's why it's so important for step parents, especially to take charge of defining their own role and really understanding who they want to be. Like, I was really clear when I walked in and and married into this family. I knew the kind of stepmom I was going to be. Right. From experience as a stepkid. Now, now is it the same stepmom that your stepmom was? Or did you learn from her mistakes? Yeah. I mean, I took all things into consideration. I had a stepmom and a stepdad since I was a year old. Um, And then, you know, also having friends and, and seeing the struggles that our kids have like my kids have with their stepmom, knowing those struggles, um, which every child is going to have a struggle with their step parent, right? Like but they every, like bio but every, parents. Like every adu- kid I, has a struggle with, with their, their parent. Bio, yeah. I, I say that and not as a slight to my children's stepmother. It's just kids struggle with all parents. And so, but taking note specifically with the step parent or, you know, I've also seen your children struggle with me as a step parent. Well, I've seen my children struggle with me as a parent. Like <laughs> so it's part of if your if your kids struggle with you and they give you pushback, that means you're doing your job. That means that you're doing yeah. a good job because you're setting boundaries. But I I do try to be informed and take notice instead of being offended. You know, I'm not offended when your kids have a struggle with me. I really understand. I understand what's being fed to them at their mom's house. I understand that our relationship is what it is real time with each other. 
I understand allegiances and I understand loyalties and I, I understand, I don't, it doesn't upset me. I just understand. And so with that understanding, I try just to be consistent, a support, um, and just be who I feel is who I want to be. So from your step parents growing up, yeah, you learned a lot of things that you don't necessarily like. Did you learn good things from them? Um, yeah, I can talk about my stepmom. You know, one thing I learned from my stepmom in that relationship was that I knew I was never going to force relationship. Okay. I was never going to make anyone call me a title. Yeah. And but I did didn't she make you that. call you a title or her a title? I had to call her mom. Yes, 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 yes. I'm saying. So that's a negative thing that you learned a plus from. Yes. Were there good things that you're like, oh, my stepmom did this great? Yes. I learned from that. And that's my point. Is, oh, you want the good is, stuff too. Well, I don't need all of it. I just, uh, I'm, mm-hmm. you don't even have to give us an example. I'm mm-hmm. just saying that as step parents, as bio parents, our mm-hmm. kids learn good things. They also learn bad things. Yeah. From us. They learn negative behavior. They learn positive behavior. Hopefully they take but the good, hopefully right? Hopefully they have good discretion. And again, that's our job as parents is to teach our children to have discretion, to teach our children to think for themselves. Because if we are always the ones thinking for them yeah. until they're 18 and then boom, we send them out the door. Now our kids don't know how to think for themselves. <laughs> well, Yeah. You know? Yep. Welcome to 2023. But that's also as adults. And that's my point in this, this specific thing. It's like when you, when you're letting someone else define your role, (laughs) are you thinking for yourself? Right. No, adults do this too. And, um, and so, yeah, I, I I think it's so good. Okay. Let's move on because we have so many more to get to. Um, oh, I love this one. This might be my favorite. You should probably tell us about it. Okay. So what I wrote was hold space for possibility. Hold space for is that, possibility. Is that like hope? Is that like having hope? You read the notes. No, I didn't. You did not? No, that was that was purely a guess right okay, now. Okay, literally the next words are, that's where hope exists. Oh, see? Brilliance. Hold space for possibility. That's where hope exists. Okay. The second you given to limiting beliefs. Do you know what limiting beliefs are? Yeah. Okay. The second you give in to limiting beliefs, it's a hopeless situation. Yeah, because there's no room to grow at that point. You've basically no put up a roadblock and mm-hmm. we're done. You cut it off. This The conversation's over. Yep. And in blended families, in all families, in all marriages, this is, you know, everyone, hope is really necessary. And hope is necessary to continue on the journey as a family and in your marriage, hope is necessary to motivate you and inspire you and and to also, like, even when you're trying to set goals, like, what do we want for our family? You know, there has to be hope there that there's going to be a family to <laughs> to goal with, you know? Right. Um, and I think it's just a really, really important thing. Now, holding space for possibility, what does that mean? Like, how would one do that, do you feel? I don't know. Let's let's find out. No, I <laughs> well, I think it all goes back to belief. So, for instance, um, I'll tell a story about. So, when you have your mind made up about your co-parent, right? And you know who, like, there's no possibility that, like, you have your mind made up. You have a belief. So the way we're wired, and I've talked about this on a previous previous podcast, the way we're wired is we're wired to live and live according to our beliefs. So we will always look for all evidence to prove ourselves right. Because of that, if you have a limiting belief or a belief without possibility, then all you're going to see, even if other things are happening, right? You're not going to see all the good, the blessing, the, the whatever, All you're going to be able to see and hone in on is things that you could twist, manipulate, or that are proving your your belief correct. So if you believe about your step parent that they're just a narcissistic asshole, Asshole if that was a belief you had, you would not see any good. 
Right. You would only attach the thing. You'd only pick up on the things that are proving yourself it's right. It's like if you're going car shopping and you're like, hey, I'm going to look for a Toyota Tacoma right now because that's really what I want is a Toyota Tacoma. Mm. Now, all you start seeing on the road Toyota is Toyota Tacomas. Tacomas. Yep. So you need to deal with your beliefs. You need to start giving, adjusting your beliefs a little bit to create space for possibility. Um, and then you might have a different experience. Then you're open to a different experience. Uh, I, I remember, and I'll just, I'll, I'll bring this story up. There was a situation where uh, I had a, and I've done this too. It's just the story that comes to mind. So I had a, I've done the same thing in reverse. So when I tell the story, know that I'm guilty of the same. Today, Junior. Today, Junior. I had a birthday party for our daughter at a gymnastics place. <laughs> I know okay. this is go so stupid. And part of I bought the I bought a package. Right. A package, a birthday party package. Yeah. And part of the package is that they um decorate, they lay out all the tables, they do a class, they put together goodie bags yeah. and they also it's, print invitations and they fill out invitations it's for a, you. It's a one-stop shop. You're like, hey, uh, my daughter wants to have a birthday party here and what do you guys offer? And they go, we offer everything. You basically write us one check and we take care of everything yeah. for you, including sending out birthday invitations. Well, they didn't send them out, but they filled them out. Oh, they filled them out. Okay. They filled them out so I didn't have but to. But they were like cute, fun, like ready yes. to rock, like come to... Yes. So um, I didn't think anything of it. Well, you didn't know to think of it. <laughs> it's one of like live and learn. I guess I could have been more specific and that's on me. But so w they filled out her invitations and it said um, Annabelle Stoltz. Yeah. It had our last name. Our last name because I paid for it. Well, I'm because it says what's the child's name on the on the I remember the, the thing because you pulled out. You're like, well, I didn't write her name like that. And it says child's name. You put Annabelle. I didn't put Annabelle and then her, yeah, her yeah. last name. Yeah. I just put our last name. Or I didn't put a last name. You didn't put a last name. I that's, just put Annabelle yeah, and I didn't put a last name. And so they attached my last name, which is now your last name. But it became, I can't even tell you, <laughs> like the amount of like, the, the, it became such drama. And I remember meeting with actually her stepmom about this. Well, not about this, but I had met with her stepmom and she brought it up. And she's just so committed to thinking the worst of me. Which is so ironic. But I have done this. It, to be fair, I have been committed to thinking the worst of her. Whoa. And I have been committed to thinking the worst of all the parents. Yeah. Like, I, I'm not, um, I, I say that as me too. Um, but I remember in that moment, it was such a lesson because I was like, wow. Like, I am telling her to face this, like, this, this is like a year or two later. And I'm telling her, like, wow, that was not my intention. Like, I bought, she really did not believe me. Yeah. She thought I was lying to so her. So, the one pulling up to this meeting with their last name and all the. I get, and it doesn't matter. But my the point household. Is, is I'm like, like, wait, you hypocrite. But this was a limiting <laughs> belief of hers. Like, she really, her, they believed that I was intentionally yeah. being some way and that they were really offended. But how petty is it that you'd have, and you didn't, but you, like, you could prove it and be like, look at here's the sign up sheet. Like, yeah. Stupid. But this is what I'm saying well, about. Why, what are we, no why, problem. why are we wasting our time on this pettiness? Like, come on, people. Because we get need it together. To, we're wasting time because we have to prove ourselves right. Bull, who cares if we're right just, or wrong? But I'm saying this I'm is the saying. cycle, the this limiting is, belief, I know. like the belief experience cycle. And the problem is, is that this, when we do not hold possibility, even for people we don't like, okay, I get that my kid's stepmom does not like me, right? I don't much like her either. The problem is, is that when we get in this cycle, and this is something I'm working on, and it's a work in progress, there's no possibility. And all it does is it makes it harder. So when you crowd out possibility for, for anyone in your co-parenting relationships, whether that is your ex or their, your ex's spouse, it really just makes that relationship harder. And so, and I have done the same in reverse. You know, I have been committed to thinking the worst of everyone. And it makes it, it makes it harder. You know, even thinking the worst about our children. Even thinking the worst about your own husband. Yeah, I mean, it makes yeah. it, it, 
it makes life harder. I mean, I'm guilty of that across the board with my own kids, with my stepkids, with you, with our exes, with our exes' spouses, with my parents, with my mom, who I love dearly. There have been points in there. How about my parents? No. Liar. I don't think I have. I'm, I'm trying to think. But I mean, really, it just it it. So you need you need it's something that's been Juliet a journey for me. Becoming heard. <laughs> dot com. Dot com, to help you shift your mindset. So it's a mind shift. You have to change your beliefs. Yeah, you have and, to open up possibilities. Because I'm like, I don't understand how people have time for that. I think this is why I co-parent the way I do, because I don't have time for this. And not <laughs> not. I mean, I could be lazy at home. I would rather be in bed sleeping. Watching TV, I ha- I I don't have time for this. I have time for that. I have time to do nothing, but like that is just so horrific to me. I think that's why I co-parent the way I do. Are you calling because me horrific? No, I just sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just don't have True time story. for that level of pettiness and yeah, the way exhausting. that a it's lot exhausting. of people and a lot of people around us co-parent. I'm like, I just I don't have the capacity for it. Yeah, it just takes you down and it brings you down, and you just you live in the septic tank with these people and I just can't do it. Yeah. You have, you've always, yes, I would say you've challenged me in the best ways that way. And I'm so glad I'm because, with you. Uh, well, thank you. Likewise. And I think part no, of I, it, I'm the abyss that you, the yeah, abyss. I'm the abyss in and, this and, situation. And Hey, <laughs> call it laziness. Maybe that's what it is. I'm like, I just don't have the capacity to deal with that. Like I would really, I'd really rather just, you're not about drama. I, I can't. Yeah. I, it's good. Um, Okay. Moving on. This is more of a hard one. <laughs> I'm calling out all the hypocrites. Oh. You know, um, you must value. Okay, what you value for yourself, you must also value for others, including your co-parents and their spouses and each other's kids. You know, last week we were talking about fairness, and I think that this is a really practical way why life isn't fair and, and circumstances aren't fair, and it all looks very different. If you guys didn't listen to it, listen to last week's podcast. It was kind of a banger in that regard. <laughs> banger. It was. Um, what, I, what I've really come to realize working with clients, and, you know, I, when I work with clients, I work on myself, too. I can never ask clients to do something I'm not willing to do myself, which is like hard. (laughs) Um, and I've also, I get coached and I've been coached for years now. And one thing that I've really come to realize is that we value so much, but only for ourselves. We don't really value it when it comes to other people. It's because people don't value other people. No one, no people no longer care about anyone else. And that's, again, I said it earlier, but that's our society right now. Everything is so me, 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 and right now, and superficial, and this, and then on to the next thing. Mm -hmm. No one stops to value anymore. Value is a lost art. Value is a lost art. But it also, you know, there's a hypocrisy that's, that's created. So an example I use in coaching, which I can use here, is that when we work, when we work w- on values, when I work on values with a client and help them figure out, like, what are your values? Some people have never done that work. Some people have, they, like, they think they know, and then we start talking about it, and they're like, oh, I really don't value that, and I thought I did, or because I should, right? We should all over ourselves. Should my pants. Um, I should value this, and so, therefore, I value this, and then when we talk about it, it's like, that's not really a value of mine. So, I use this as an example. You know, a lot of people value independence, Um, I've worked with clients who really, that's like their top value. And what we uncover is like, yes, I, I value my independence. I want my independence. I'm like, oh, cool. So what does that look like? Well, I want to be able to parent my kids the way I see fit. I want to spend my money the way I see fit. I want to, um, be able to go on girls trips if that's what I really want for myself. Like I want to have mine. Me, 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 me. I value independence, right? Oh, cool. So. If you're, oh, cool. if you're so significant, you're a significant uh, no, but if you're sick of, <laughs> no. so you value independence. So your significant other also can go spend money the way they want and uh, make decisions without you and do trips without, oh no, that would not be okay with me. <laughs> you laugh, but this is like when we start digging in deep to values, oh, like, this, like the you hypocrisy. Have people that is like this. I'm like, I don't feel, 
Yes. Do you feel like we're like this? No, this is an example. Oh. Not a real life oh, example. Oh, I thought you were talking. I'm like, wait a second. No, this is just an example. Yeah. So this happens a lot. It's like what I value for myself, I don't really value for my spouse. Mm, okay. Or what I value for my kids, I don't really value when it comes to my stepkids. Yeah. Or what I value in my co-parenting relationship, I'm not really extending that grace to anyone else. Right. And there's a hypocrisy. And I think that that hypocrisy really tears blended families apart. It's really important, one, for you to know what you value, and two, not to be a hypocrite about it. Because if you're a hypocrite about it, you don't really value it. You know what I mean? I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Can you think of any examples of that in our, I mean, I'm. Oh, like, like 10,000 of them. 10,000. I don't want to call you out. Hypocrisy. <laughs> Just kidding. It's a really hard thing. I, th- I, I, I feel like. Our house sometimes is like that, where we're just. I feel like our boat. Our boat's like that. The contradiction. <laughs> oh my gosh. We. Oh my gosh. I think I talked about it the other day. Like maybe we'll let people into our lives a little bit more <laughs> this year. But <laughs> our boat, my nickname for it. Now everyone has a nickname for their boat, and it's like it's a surf wake boat. So we the people don't do that in the in these types of boats, you know. But I started calling it the contradiction. <laughs> Why is that? Why don't you tell everyone <laughs> why that is? Because every time my dad steps on the boat, it contradicts everything I say, everything I do. And and mind you, he he grew up and I grew up with, you know, him racing on sailboats. So he knows about sailboats. But I grew up on the lake. I grew up, you know, wakeboarding and know a lot about lake life and mm. what it looks like and, and, you know, how that goes. And it's just not the same as sailboats it's not the same it's not the same as sailboats you know and it's just it's fun yeah the contradiction it's not fun it's fun to laugh about later it's not fun at the time it's not no no hypocrisy also is not fun no to live with that yeah it builds resentment you know i think that's that it builds resentment and bitterness and that really the good thing is i'm i've been raised by my dad and him and i don't carry it past that moment we don't go back to the house. Well, you all, all of you people are like that. All you people? Yeah, your family's a people. All you people? All you people are like, that's very odd. <laughs> I was not raised like that. Yeah. I'm well, but this, so and, uh, like we, that. yeah, so we end up back at the house and it's time to barbecue and hang out and, and burn meat. <laughs> I'm not the one cooking <laughs> again. I'm we should have named the barbecue. <laughs> He's doing great with the new, with his new. Well, yes, it like cooks itself. Like, there's cooks nothing you have to do. <laughs> Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Love dad, you, Dad. <laughs> um, next nugget. <laughs> I'm hungry again. Okay. Have reasonable and rational expectations in your blended family. Yeah. I feel like um, something a lot of people struggle with is that their their expectations are so unreasonable and unrealistic that they're constantly disappointed. You know, people are constantly disappointed and people feel let down and people feel, you know, and I think that has a lot to do with change, but we can't change people. You know, we have all these idealistic views and people are going to change and um, this is how it should be. And all of that's really unreasonable and unrealistic. And I think it really, you know, it hinders a lot of people from growing it creates, again, those bitter roots and resentments that, right. you know, so when you think about your expectations that you have for your marriage, for your stepkids, um, for your relationship, one of the biggest unreasonable real, okay. Okay. I'm going to go for uh, a minute. Are you? I am. Okay, here's You've already the been deal. going for two minutes. I'm over here texting. You're texting. And hey, uh, and, just, and just a little side note, that London is getting released. Oh, that's so good. The people are like, what? No people in prison? No, one of our kids, one of my, one of our friends, church friends, family friends, um, son got in a real bad dirt bike accident yesterday, That's but he's scary. all right. Yay. Yeah. Um, amen to that. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that actually. Yeah. Um, so here's the deal with unreasonable and unrealistic expectations. One of the biggest ones, and really it's entitlement. I'm going to say that this one's entitlement. Nobody likes an entitled child, right? Like that bugs an Entitled people. anything. So one of the things I see a lot is step parents who get married and walk into a home with complete entitlement. 
Do you know where I'm going with this? I know exactly where you're going like, with this. Like, I'm yeah. entitled to rule the roost. I'm entitled to have um, all control. I'm entitled to discipline. I'm entitled to um, to say how it's going to go. And I'm I'm just entitled to everything because I married your your parent. And so now you belong to me. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> you should have a theme song for this. It, it pisses me off, though. There's this, there's, and I... <laughs> For a lot of reasons. But there's okay. this, like, because I married your parent, I'm entitled to all of this. And I'm like, mm, kids are a lot smarter than that. And yeah. kids, just because you did that doesn't entitle you to, the you know, some subservient relationship you're going to about to have with you want with your stepkids. Like, you have to earn relationships. And so I think that that is, when we think about expectations, when we go into blended families, Step parents really need to check themselves. And bio parents too. You know, um, relationships have to be earned. So when you have unrealistic expectations for your spouse and your children, it puts a lot of pressure on it. And pressure cookers can explode. So bio parents check yourself around your expectations of your spouse with your with your children because relationships have to be earned and they have to grow. They're not instant just because you married someone or moved in together. Right. You know, I think everyone really needs to calm down and adjust their expectations. Calm down. And really, if you're showing up in your blended family like that, that's entitlement. What do you expect your kids to do? Be entitled. You know, so I think I think when you're really upset about entitlement, that's, you know, hold up a mirror and see where can you grow in that dang mrs swift that was deep it's a that's a soapbox issue of mine um we have time for one more even though i could go on with forever do you <laughs> want to cut in here or you want me no, just to I'm, go? i'm having fun jumping on yours i had a few ideas but then you're like well i've got them all so i'm like let's just run with it and well i just didn't know what you're coming with i wanted to be prepared uh, nope uh, okay. you have all the preps okay well i'm going to you pick one of the last three and you say what, what, which one that you feel is most helpful to blended families? Um, I'll just read the. Let's read the last. The last one is fine because okay. I, I don't have time to read all of those. It's like six sentences. Are you sentences. serious? <laughs> no. There's three. Oh. One, two, oh, oh, three. Oh, the last. Oh, that's fine. The last one's great, anyways. I just like it. It's okay. stuck. It jumped out at me. Okay. So the last one for today is to focus on the big picture. We over me. Okay. We over me. Um, you know, I think we get really short-sighted in blended families. We're all about our experience and our pain and our, our, and what's, what's wrong, what's like being wronged in our world and what's unjust, you know, all this stuff about me, me, me. And it's a really short-sighted way to do blended family life. And it is really refocusing to the long game and to your family like, what is best for our family versus what is best for me? What is best for our marriage rather than what do I, what is best for me? And sometimes what's best for me is best for our marriage, I guess. But it needs to it needs to be filtered that way. Well, we need to learn how to live, you know, hopefully earlier, a little selflessly, you know, and live for others. And I think um, in a blended family, you really that really gets heightened, you know, in one way or the other whether you do or whether you don't, but light is always shined on however you're living in that situation because people pay attention a little differently. You know, there is those levels of entitlement. There is the levels of laziness. You know, everyone comes at this with different, er you know, from different areas. You know, the kids come from two different families. One you know, one parent for one kid, like everyone's just in different places in a blended family. Whereas in a normal family that, um, that hierarchy just, it just happens. It just flows. Kids know no different at that point. Whereas here now, even the kids are involved. The kids are, um, you're not my mommy. Yeah. The kids are making, <laughs> the kids are playing judgment where me growing up, I never had that. I never knew, 
I knew when I liked and didn't like dis, you know, when I liked and disliked my parents <laughs> growing up. But they were your parents. But they were my parents, and it always came back around, and, and it just, there might have been those little down times and those slumps, but I always came back to liking them. I never ran away from my parents because, like, they weren't my mommy or my daddy, you know? It was always like, well, uh, you know, I their rules. I gotta uh, do yeah, it. I gotta <laughs> conform, and that's that. Like, I don't really have a choice. Yeah. You know, whereas in a blended in a blended family, kids get entitled quickly at mm-hmm. young ages. They do, but that's really I think modeled by the parents. It totally is. It's modeled by everyone. It's everyone so. jumping in here trying to do their best, not knowing what to do mm-hmm. and just screwing everything up. How do you think because the last one was focusing on the bigger picture? Right. How does focusing on the bigger picture do you think helps people with entitlement issues? Because it's not about you, it's about us well, I as don't a know whole, and then are you can, less entitled that way? Yeah, I don't way? know if everyone can envision the bigger picture. I don't know if everyone ha- knows what a bigger picture looks like. Like, what's Okay, wh- let's talk about that. Let's help yeah. people right now. Bigger picture, you know, for me, uh, because uh, people are like, I want a successful blended family. Yeah. <laughs> what does success mean to you? Well, does that mean that you... Mm-hmm. Never got divorced. Right. Does that mean that you go on vacation once a year? Does that mean that everyone is respect? We we don't have to like each other, but we respect each other. Like, what does success mean to you? Well, and also, well, here's the other thing that you have to think of, too, is blended families. And I'm starting to really, really, really realize this. Is that now blended, that the kids are almost grown and out. That's exactly what I'm realizing is that all of a sudden, like, blended families are, for lack of a better term, ticking time bombs. You know, <laughs> not not necessarily that this they're going to. This is a really encouraging podcast. Keep listening. No, but you have limited time yeah, to true. influence it. And as you do with a normal family, too, you have limited time to pour into these kids and get them ready for the world. And it's and no different. And you have half the time in most cases. But that's it. You have limited time with more, you know, cooks in the kitchen to really set these kids up and get them ready. And it's so much more challenging than most most normal families yep you know every everyone has their struggles of course but it comes and it goes quickly but even though it's you know done and the kids are out doesn't necessarily mean it stops it means just this first it's like elementary school blended families and when the kids are young they're you know it's like being in elementary school they better learn their abcs and their one two threes otherwise they are going to struggle the rest of the time in life so it, it's a short period, you know, and we are blended family right now. And we're in the thick of it. And we're talking about it right now. We're talking about the struggles with our kids and our stepkids. But what's that look like for us in 10 years from now when the youngest one is 23 years old? What's that look like for us? Like, well, yeah, we're still a blended family, but we're in a different, much, much different season than we were right now when the youngest is 13 because – we're dealing with the kids on a daily basis, whereas at that point in time, the kids are adults. We're dealing with you and I on a daily basis. We're dealing with us. So looking at that big picture, what does us look like as a um, retired blended family, if you will? Like, yeah, we still, you know, we still know everything about it, but we're not in the thick of it like you are in a normal daily work workflow, you know? No, I, I love that. And it reminds me, too, you know, why you put your marriage first well that's that's my point of the this big yeah. picture what's that big picture look like like am i in this am i in this blended family for the kids am i in this blended family for my stepkids am i here am i showing up for to be here for your kids is that what keeps me here or am i here for you and if i'm here for you what does that look like you know and the the kids are part of this you know you have to be able to really just step back and look at all aspects of this And I think it's really important you do that. You have to figure out what you want. You have to figure out what is your long game here. Because we get very short-sighted. We get very focused on, you know, the daily upset. And that's where we live instead of really, like, stepping back, letting go. And, like, I'm focusing on the end game, which is, like, oh, my gosh. Possibilities are endless. There's so much hope there. Right. You know? Um. So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed listening to some of our nuggets. 
um, some of our pieces of wisdom, advice we wish we would have gotten prior to blending our families and things that we've learned. We would love to hear from you. If you have something to add to the topic, please comment below wherever you're listening to or watching this. Um, Or you can join our Facebook group, which is Blended Life. It's a private group. You have to answer a couple of questions, but join in the conversation there. Give the wisdom, give the advice that you would give others who are going down this road. Um, And we would love to hear from you. Subscribe. Yeah. And if you guys want to change life, your life as you live it. Yeah. Becomingheard now at gmail.com or just go to becomingheard.com and give Julie a a look and let's work together. Work it, work it. Yeah. Let's figure it out together. Let's go on a transformation journey. I would be honored to come alongside of you um, and see how we can change your life. Thank you guys for listening. Yeah, thanks for being here. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.